Okay, how you doing today? Uh, today we're getting ready for a fair coming up this weekend, and we're going to be selling some lawn signs that uh, we had custom made, and we need to have a sign to put on the signs to let people know what the pricing is for the different sizes that we have. So we could just print this out on eight and a half by eleven piece of paper on an inkjet printer, and that would be fine. But we have a step craft machine with a drag knife, and this is a perfect opportunity to make a sign that has a little bit of style to it. So the first thing I wanted to do is open up a work area here. I'm using Photoshop, but you could use Inkscape, Illustrator, CorelDRAW, it doesn't matter. I set up a work area here that's eight inches wide by 10 inches tall. And the reason I did that is I, I needed to fit within the printable area of my inkjet printer. And since my printer doesn't print edge to edge on eight and a half by 11, I made the work area smaller so that anything that falls on this page will be printed and I don't have to worry about it getting clipped off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find a border, which I did, and I brought it into Photoshop and I sized it to the exact size that I want for, for this particular sign. So this is gonna be the path that the StepCraft machine is gonna cut out later. Uh, I'm not concerned about this when it comes time to print it on the inkjet printer. That's only for uh, what the tool path is gonna be later for the drag knife. So I wanna start by laying in my text, which I'd already designed. So I have the lawn signs title, and then I have some smaller text that has the different sizes with the pricing on it. And I've got everything laid out within the border the way I want it. Now, the next most important thing is to have a XY reference point. Because I'm printing the text out on an inkjet printer, and then I'm gonna take that piece of paper and move it over to my StepCraft machine, the StepCraft has no idea that there's text on the paper and it, it, it's gonna start and run from wherever you position it. So because I want the border to be even, like it, it looks here, I have to create an XY reference point. And I'm gonna do that right in this lower corner, and I've actually drawn it already. All it is is a, a vertical and a horizontal line that, that meet in the center. And this is gonna be our XY reference point. Now what I need to do is I need to print the text and this XY reference point out on my inkjet printer on some colored cardstock that I bought. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the border and I am going to go file, print, and I'm gonna print this file to my inkjet printer. Now, once that's done, the next thing I have to do is I have to save a file specifically with the border. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hide the text because I don't need it. But now I have a printed uh, sheet from my inkjet printer with text on it and this reference point. So now I need to have a file that I can import into Cut2D and also have this reference point. So I'm gonna hide the text, I'm gonna leave the reference point and the shape, and I am going to export this as a PNG file. Uh, it's gonna be pretty simple, I'm just gonna call it lawn sign, and I already have one there, so I'm just gonna save it. And now we're done, that's, that's all we need to do with Photoshop at this point. Okay, so now that I have my text printed out on a piece of construction paper, it's time to create the tool path for the drag knife. So I'm gonna open up Cut2D, I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna set the width and height of the file to be equal uh, the eight by 10 that I used in Photoshop. So I'm gonna use that. I set the thickness of my material to 5 thousandths, which is about the thickness of the construction paper I'm using. Uh, I'm going to set my material Z to the bottom of the paper, to the bottom of the material. Uh, X, Y datums, lower left corner, and I'm working in inches right now. So what I need to do first is import the border image that I exported as a PNG in, from Photoshop. So I'm going to do that by clicking on this icon here, and I'm going to go down to lawn sign and open that up. There's my, my border and there's my XY reference mark. So first thing I need to do is I need to turn this bitmap image into a vector file. 
and Cut2D has a really awesome tool. It's this little bird here and it's called uh, Trace Bitmap. So we're going to click on that and since this image is black and white, we're going to we have two options. We can do color or black and white. So we're going to stay black and white. We're looking I'm going to leave the threshold in the middle at 50. And basically, because this is a solid black line, you can stay right in the middle without any problem. If it was a grayscale image, then you can make some adjustments there to get the finest resolution that you can out of your uh, trace. I'm just going to leave the default noise and corner fit and default fading. Now you can see when I hit default fading, the line here gets a little bit lighter. Now what I want to do is click preview. And you can see it draws two lines all the way around the image. And also this reference point here, now it becomes a, a vector. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take a look and it looks like we traced everything good. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And then I'm gonna close this. Now I'm gonna go up to the layers tab and I wanna remove or turn off, click the light bulb, which will remove the bitmap layer. So I don't have to look at it because now I have the outline. Now you'll notice because of the thickness of the line, I've got two uh, lines running parallel to each other. The inner line, I want to just get rid of because I, I only need one. I'm not going to run the tool path around twice. I, I only need the one border. So I'm going to highlight it and hit the delete key. Now what I'm left with is the perimeter of the sign that I want to do. So the next step here is Remember what I said about this XY reference point. Right now, the if I were to run this job and I were to go ahead and line the drag knife up on this XY point, if this is my piece of paper and this is where the XY is and I line my starting position up here, what's going to happen is when it goes to cut, it's actually going to start to cut from here because the job, the G-code sees this lower corner as the starting position and not here. So what we need to do basically is move the image, the outline and the XY reference point down to the lower corner. So we're going to highlight everything I'm going to go to the move key and we are simply going to bring this down until it's in the bottom corner, just like that. Very simple. Now I'm going to open up my tool path, which is over here. I'm going to do an outline or profile toolpath. I am going to select the drag knife from my tool. And we did do a video before showing how to set up a drag knife if you don't already have one. It's uh, pretty simple, but you, uh, you can go to our website, stepcraft.us, and check out the videos, the how-to videos, and you'll see that. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to, I only want to do one pass, so we're going to change that to one pass. We want to cut on the line, not inside or outside. We're not milling, so that's fine. Uh, we don't care what the vector start point is, so we can leave that off. Uh, right now it, it sees these green uh, points here as different vector start points, so we don't need to use that, so we're going to leave that off. And the other thing is we don't want to cut this mark here, this reference mark. We only want to cut the border. So we're going to click outside. We're going to, so that way that's not selected. Then we're going to click on the border and we're going to go down here to calculate. It's going to tell us that we are setting our tool depth uh, right here. We're setting it deeper than the material thickness. We're just going to ignore that. It's fine because the tool the drag knife is spring loaded. So we are actually going to set it up so that when the job starts, it's going to push down a little bit on the spring. That's going to keep tension on the knife to make sure we have a nice even cut. So right here is our outline path. And that's exactly what we are looking for. So now what we're going to do is we need to export this tool path. So we're going to make sure that the profile three is selected. We're going to click save tool path. Because it's a step craft, we're going to make sure we're using the Mach 2 slash 3 arcs millimeter uh, post processor. And we're going to click Save Tool Path. And I have a, we're just going to put it right now on the desktop. And let's save this as, we're just going to call it Sign. Nice and easy. Click Save. That's it.
so now the next thing we're going to do is move over to our Stepcraft machine. We're going to lay the paper that we printed onto the inkjet printer down. We're going to line up the X, Y coordinate with the lines that we made, and we're going to cut out the outline. All right, so we're using a Cricut mat that we bought at Michael's Crafts. It's, it's a tack, has a tacky surface, and there's an alignment grid on it, which is really nice for helping us align the, the piece of paper that we're, we're using. They come like this from, there's two of them in a package for I think around $14, $15 at Michael's. Uh, so this is a, a pretty useful tool. So what we're going to do is line the mat up on the T-slot table that we have here and we want to make sure that the edge of the mat is lined up with the slot. That's I don't care about this way, we just want to make sure one edge is lined up with the slot. By doing that, it's going to ensure that the grids are going to be perpendicular to each other.